Hey, what's up, guys? We're going to answer a lot more of your guys' questions today. Um, I think you guys like these Ask Me Something videos, so I want to keep doing them for you guys. Just a little bit of something I throw off to the side, okay? So we're going to start with Earl Nicholson. Please, can you explain why raw feeding is good for pit bulls and why raw feeding could be bad for pit bulls? Um, you got to check out some of my other videos that I made on this channel. Raw feeding, there's a lot of benefits that I probably can't go into right now. It's going to take up probably the whole video and there's a lot of bad stuff that could be into there too. So a couple things that I could point out is um, healthier for their coat, skin allergies, better for their teeth. They have better structure and build. They focus more in training. Overall, the food gives them more nutrients than kibble could because kibble could kill your dog and it could shorten their lifespan. This is just some of the little quick ones I could think off top of my head. But raw feeding does have its you know cons, especially if you're not doing it right. So you want to go check out some of those videos I made previously. This is from Sandow Sebeko. Hey there, I have a question. How do you build engagement with your dog? My dog finds me boring, even when I try to be exciting. Um, There's a lot of ways that you can build engagement with your dog. You know, there's really three core pieces that I feel like dogs find interesting, and that's obviously either you, it could be a toy, or it could be food. Now, if you want to incorporate all three of those things into one, that's probably something that you have to do. But you got to, you know, think of some fun games. Maybe your dog is into, you know, playing fetch and you could use that to your advantage. Maybe they're into, you know, searching for their food and you could use that to your advantage too. Making sure that, you know, they're training for their food. You're the one that's giving it to them. There's tons of ways you could build engagement. There's a lot of dog games you could play, dog exercises, training itself. Obedience training could really build a lot of, you know, engagement. You got to find out one of those core pieces that they're interested in though. This one is from Omar. If I don't have enough space for a dog, is it better to don't buy the dog and wait till I have space? Or is it okay for my dog to have a small place to stay at? Come on, man. That's very obvious, okay? If you don't have space for the dog, don't get the dog. You know what I mean? You can't have a dog in a small space. They need space, man. They need a lot more things in space, but you can't do that, man. This is from Susanna. What dog food do you recommend for a four-month blue nose? I made a video about this. Um, there's origin puppy food. There is um, taste of the wild. You know, kibble's not the number one food I would feed. Um, you know, I've made videos on this. You should go check out some of them. This one's from Sarah the Green Monster. How do you know when pit bulls are angry? I'm gonna get a pit bull in a few days. That's why. Um, it's really something that you really have to study behavioral issues. A lot of owners have a problem not reading their dog correctly when they're, you know, overstimulated by to attack something or, you know, when a dog is very frustrated or very stressed, you know, kind of like panting, you know, they're very stressed when they're panting and whatnot. A lot of dog owners can't read that. So uh, just pay attention to your dog. Look at their eyes. If their eyes get wide, um, they start growling or their tails go up in the air and they're starting to stiffen up. You could definitely tell when a dog is uncomfortable or when they're about to do something. So uh, just keep that in mind. Another question from Big Boy. Hey, big dog, just watched a couple of your videos and I've seen the recent one. I have a question. What is a reasonable price for a pit bull puppy? You know, I heard people say they get one 200 to 300 bucks. Ah, this is a tough one because if you're getting the real American Pitbull Terrier, you're not paying 200 to 300 bucks. If you're paying 200 to 300 bucks for your Pitbull puppy, most likely you're getting it from a backyard breeder that is probably not registered. You know, all their puppies are not registered and they don't have papers for them. There's no real set in stone price, but I know that, you know, a real quality dog is easily going to be over 1K. It could be much more than that. It just depends on where you're getting it from, how reputable they are, and you know what breeder you're getting it from. So just keep that in mind. But if you're getting under a thousand bucks, I can almost guarantee you you're getting it from a backyard breeder. And uh, you got to really be careful for them. You know, they might not health test and stuff like that. Unethical stuff goes on in behind the scenes. So you got to be careful. This one is from Drift. What's the best leashes, collars, and harnesses for a pit bull in your opinion? Well, let me show you. Top Bullies Harness. Love it. Got the clip right here. You can attach a, a, a leash, a parachute. You have a handle to handle your dog. You have adjustable straps down here. Um, really nice harness. I really think it's good. Hey, you could you know, buy some pockets, add on there. 
collars, I suggest a collar that has these kind of buckles right here, or it's metal, as you could, let me see. Can't make noise with my ring, but it's very uh, sturdy. And um, if I take it apart, you know, it has Velcro as well on top of the metal buckle. I think that's the best. And there's some leashes that have um, a carabiner on there as well. And they're a lot more sturdier than just your little simple clip-on leashes. Next question is Lebahoa. I don't, I'm just probably butchering your guys' names, but how do I know if a pit bull is about to fight? Yesterday I was talking to someone and their dog was barking and trying to bite my dog, but my dog seemed happy and was quiet and calm, wagging her tail and all, but was trying to go to the other dog. So this is a pure example on why I believe not every dog that your dog sees needs to be interacted with. Okay, because they're not going to want to talk to everyone. Imagine you going up to everyone and just talking and say, hey, well, how you doing? What's your name? You know what I mean? That's kind of what owners are doing with their dogs. And it's very pointless. When a dog is about to fight, you could tell because their tails start to go up in the air. Their bodies start to get a little stiff. When you have that head to head interaction where they're kind of just looking at them through the side eye and um, you could just tell their body stiffened up and um, they're not liking what they're doing right now. Obviously, growling is one of them. Um, it's not just that, though. You need to be careful because, you know, dogs that are interacting with each other, they could just start scrapping out of nowhere. So you need to be careful with that as well. Next question is from Mike Moorhead. My question for you is how do you switch puppy food? You know, switching a puppy's food is probably a lot more easier than an adult dog. But um, what you could do is just fast them for a day and then give them a little bit of the new food, you know, a little bit at a time. It just depends on what kind of food you're switching them to. If you're switching them to a raw diet, then you need to do one protein source at a time to make sure they have no reactions. I would kind of take the same approach with new kibble food if your dog has a sensitive stomach. Usually puppies are able to switch right away, but if your dog has some stomach issues, I would definitely take it slowly at a time. Adon Catalan asks, have you used a long line to train or play with your dogs? If so, do I have any tips? Yes, I've used a long line. Um, I use it for recall and really that's just about it. It also helped me with my off leash training, but um, you need to make sure that you have some part of that leash in your hand to make sure, you know, if your dog runs away, of course, you need to have some kind of hold of that leash. And that is about it for the Ask Me Something episode four. The reason why some of these questions didn't get answered because they're very long questions and I can't get to them right now. Very busy and I'm just, the nice and short ones, I could get to those right away. So if you have any more questions, Leave them down below. Leave it nice and short, straight to the point, and those are the ones that I would get to. Other than that, I will see you guys on the next video. I am out.